Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I will be showing you what I did with that RKT recipe from the video I posted last week and how I was able to achieve this teapot cake topper. Since I already knew that for this specific cake my top tier would be 6 inches, I brought along with me a 6 inch cake pan for reference. I also brought with me a little teapot just to make sure that I was staying in proportion and within the guidelines of the cake and to make sure that it wasn't too big or too small to be the cake topper of this specific cake. When I gathered what I thought would be enough of the Rice Krispie, I wrapped it in some plastic wrap and just started kind of compressing it or mushing it together. And it just made it a little bit easier for me to form into a quote unquote perfect ball. If you do have little holes, you can always go back and patch it with a little bit of the extra RKT. Once I was able to achieve the round ball, I went ahead and flattened out the bottom and also flattened out a top just to make sure that when I go ahead and put it on the cake, it is able to stand on its own and for the top to make sure that I'm able to put on the little top for the teapot. I also used a long skewer or you can also use a cake pop stick but I really recommend these because they're pointy at the top and it's easier to slide in your teapot onto them and out of them. For this next part what we're going to do is we're going to patch up the little holes or kind of just make our RKT teapot a little bit smoother. For this process I'm using very stiff uh, royal icing but you can also use ganache. And the purpose of this step is just to make your ball of Rice Krispies smoother than as if you would just use it straight as it is now. I used a flexible icing smoother just to remove a few of the lumps and bumps that the icing left. Um, for this part, you can also use an acetate sheet or you can also wait until the icing dries a little bit and just kind of smooth it out carefully with your hands and your fingers. Now we are going to proceed to make the spout and the handle for our teapot. And for this part, I have two pieces of floral wire that I got on a little Wilton kit. And I will also be using gum paste for this part because like I mentioned before, it does dry a little bit less heavy than fondant does. Um, but if you don't have any gum paste, you can use fondant. And I just want to stress the importance of having a model if this is your first time making something like this because at any time when you start making the parts of your teapot, you can go back and reference to see if you grab too much fondant, too much gum paste, and you can always fix it before you're done and then you realize that it looks very off. For this part of the spout, just remember to flatten out that part up there to simulate the little spout because later we will put a little hole on there with one of our modeling tools. Store your finished pieces in an airtight container so that you can come back and fix anything if there's anything wrong with it once you're finished with all the pieces. For the handle, I rolled out a snake that was thinner at the bottom and thicker at the top and I went ahead and placed a little bit of edible glue onto my wire and just pierced it through the little snake um, and I made sure that a little piece of it stuck out at the thinner part. Thank you. 
While I made the spout and the handle, I let my little arcade tea ball dry and I'm just smoothing out the dry pieces with my fingers and I'm going to go ahead and add another layer of royal icing just to make sure that it's as smooth as possible. And again, just flatten out and smooth out any of those little imperfections with your fingers. Now that my RK T-Ball is smooth, I'm going to knead a little bit of gum paste into a circle so that I can cover my teapot. Also, make sure to roll out your gum paste not too thin and not too thick for this part. And in a few minutes, I'll show you how thick I rolled it out. Once you have your gum paste rolled out, spray your little ball of RKT with some water. You can also use edible glue, but for this part, I feel like water was enough to grasp um, the gum paste onto the royal icing. When we are done tucking and cutting in the excess, we will take out our little ball and just flip it over so we can work on the other side of the bottom or the top. At this point, the bottom or the top will just be the part that looks the prettiest once we're done covering the whole ball. To attach the spout, I cut that floor wire that I showed you in the beginning and I inserted it into the front of the little teapot. And then once I had those measured into place, I also made sure that before I did that, I added a little bit of that edible glue and inserted the spout into the little teapot. In the beginning, it will be a little bit wiggly, so you might have to let it dry for a few minutes. And to do this, you can do what I did with the handle and just place a bottle of water, a glass, or anything that's handy. Or you can just sit there and hold it until it dries. But I suggest you just find an object to do that for you. Now, once I attached the spout into the teapot, I wasn't very satisfied with how it looked, so I went ahead and patched it up with a little bit of gum paste on the sides, but it seems a little bit rough to me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a second layer of gum paste just to make sure that it's really smooth, and I went ahead and removed the handle so that I would be able to do this.
Once I was done covering and smoothing out the second layer of gum paste, I went ahead and added my handle back the same way that I added the spout in the beginning. So I took the handle and then just made sure to dip the two ends of the wire into some edible glue and had already pre-marked my holes for the handle, just went ahead and inserted them and held them in place with a water bottle for a few minutes. To add in the details for the top of the teapot, I will be using a clay extruder that I use ex exclusively for fondant and gum paste. And you can find these at your local craft store in the clay department. Now that we have the edge of our top in place, we will proceed to making the lid of the teapot. And for this part, I just rolled out a piece of gum paste and then used those circle cutters for measure as to how wide I needed to make the top. Um, in this case, I went ahead and used the purple one and I think that is approximately 3.75 inches. Um, it may depend and vary on the size of your teapot. Just make sure to measure the ones that fit the best with your size. For the final detail, I rolled out a tiny ball and placed it on top of the lid to be the handle of the teapot. Thank you so much for watching and I really hope to see you again. There is more parts to this series like when I painted the little accents gold and how to make the little teacup. I'll see you next time. Bye!